My name is Willie D. Cook. I was born and raised in McIntosh County. I was born September the 2nd, 1928. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. My mother and my father, they had nine children. And I'm the fourth one. And I lived in Mackinac County the most of my life. In 1951, I drafted in the armed forces. I took training to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, 1951. I finished my 16 weeks of visa training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and I had 10 days leave. My 10 days I come home, and then I went back and I cut the bus for Seattle, Washington. And I leave from Seattle, Washington, which they had called it Fecon, North Korea. And when I leave Seattle, Washington, I end up, end up in Tokyo, Japan. I leave Tokyo and I sail for South Korea. I leave South Korea and going up to the border of North Korea. And wrong about uh, last uh, May, when the ice start melting good, we had first tack in North Korea. And I was in a battle there. We lose a lot of men. But thank be to God, I was one still survived. Well, in Mackinac County, we used to plant rice here. This whole field we used to plant with sweet potato, corn, peas, beans, and whatnot. All right. The Mackinac County in here, no cars didn't come in here. Only cars was out on 17 and 251. And 251 was a date road. Only man out on 17 had a car with George Hall. And we had to catch the Greyhound bus from Mamie Sheffield to Deering to Brumsey or wherever you had want to go. Okay, and Deering improved a lot to where it used to be. And it fall down a lot to where it used to be. Deering was Deering when, when, when 95 come through. So 95 might near close deer. <laughs> Even take the red light out of deer. So we, 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 other words, we lose and we gain him with Mackinac County. Now 95, Greyhound bus don't run 17 no more. He run 95. You get in Savannah or either in Brunswick or Jacksonville and you're through with the Greyhound now. All right, the train used to come through here from Savannah, Jones, Townsville, Cox, Edward City. Now all that's been cut out. Uh, we used to have a lot of sawmill in Mackinac County. We ain't got near now. We used to dip turpentine in. We used to rake box here. We used to cut cross tie here. All that out of system. Them who come along later, they don't know nothing about that. Now, um, I goes out to senior citizen, I was out there today. Miss Ellen Jordan, 102 years old. And she's still moving good. Miss Young, 90-something. Miss Ellen, sister sweetie, she 90-something. Bernita Thomas, 91. My mother-in-law, Teresa MacDonald, she 97. But she in the home at the present. And uh, uh, did, did you, um, when you were a kid, did you used to work in the rice fields or with the turpentine? Or That's you, correct. You talk, Our rice that? field was from that side of the fence back to this side with rice. And in a little place over there, we used to plant rice. 
in here with my daughter trailer. We used to plant rice. No house was my house was mean here. And the little high spot like dip another place right here we plant peas. My mother garden was on the other side of the house over there from a water pump. And uh the old wash house was around there, it's still there. Could you talk could you talk about how you, how you would do the planting of the rice and how you would harvest it? Could you talk about the process? Okay, what we did we we threw the rice and plant it in a week or two hit up. And we tend the rice and keep the weed and grass out of it until it start getting up and tossing for the rice to come on. All right, and after the rice come on, me and my brother were was next to me, we had to mind the bird out the rice to keep them from eating it up. All right, and when the rice get ripe, then we cut the rice. And we cut cut the rice, bundle it up in bun like you do fodder. Which we fodder, that'll be where you strip off a corn and make it so big and tired, thing around as a bun. And that's what we did with the rice. All right, when we cut the rice and done that, then we bring it up to the house and stack it. We put a pole, like over there, one over here, and put a pole hang on it. And then we stack the rice. And it stayed there till we ready to thrash it. And when we thrash the rice out on a big sheet of spray, we thrash it, then it'll be right then to put in the mortar to beat it. And when we beat the rice, all that husk come off, and my mother would take that pan and, and shift it with the chaff to get out of it. And the wind blowing like how it is now, it blew all that out, leave all the rice good and clear in the pan. All right, then we'll be eating new rice. That'll be like uh, last of November, coming on up for December. We had new rice. New grits, corn to grind, sweet potato where we raise, beans and other things my mother would can for the year round. Just like we go into the store to get canned good, she go in her outhouse and get a jar or whatever, okra and tomatoes or corn or whatever, out her outhouse and fix that for our meal. Did the people all over here grow rice? Or? The most of people in Arctic had a good garden. And there was a lot of people in Arctic, but they done died out. They crossed the road over there was a family, had a rice field. The family over here, the Jones family, they had a rice field. The Boynes over there had a rice field. And going through here, my daddy, uncle, was right up there. His stepdaddy was right up there. And on across the backwater was the Dixon family. And on out to, after you leave the Dixon family, was the Rebecca Ross. And then that's when you got by St. Mark AME Church. And then the next was the Johnson family. And all them done died out. So now, it nobody, in this section back here, except myself and males plant a garden. Mine right the back of the house, males right down the road from me. And we the only two plants a garden. Well, my sister was right there. She plants a little okra and whatever. And, and that's all the planting of in our community of now. All the people and the stockholders are had home in you, had a little garden with everything they had. Everybody in you had a few cows or a few hogs. All this was open range. Cows and hogs in the wood. Everybody had the garden fence in you. Now when you say garden, how big a space was that? 
I would, I would have called the same thing we had in here. And we used to plant that whole field from them trees on wrong. Get away from that! All this open space you see in here, you could tell we was planting all this. And I keep it cut on pretty good. Uh, the whole field in here we was planting. Now, was this, this area, was it, was it all African American or were there whites that lived here as well? Or? No, I know white people been in all the period. Only white man was in all of because Dan MacDonald over here. And he used to go out the other way and go out to 251. Oh, everything in all of here from 251 to 17 or the Rossville, everything was black. No white people appeared. Only white man was up there and out on 251 with the gardeners and others. Where did the white people live in McIntosh County? Well, that was where they used to live. Townsville, in Elonia, in Deer. Well, we got plenty of white out here now, though, in Arctic. But the first white coming in Arctic was Bogo. Mr. the boys had sell them a piece of land over there a acre or two acres, and he had moved over there. Then after he died, his son and his wife and Tyrion come, and now we got plenty of them over there, and right there we uh, Eunice, uh, the Giving Drive, we got four or five white up in there, and right down here on the curve, we got a white there, and we got a white right after you turn out there on the left before you get the mail. Well, we got plenty of white in this community now, but we didn't used to have none. Other word, I see 56 years ago, it was more black people in Mackinac County, and it is white. But now, the scale switch. We got 50-50 or more. Why do you think that is? Huh? Why do you think that is? Well, now, number one, we got plenty of white come in the county here. We got plenty of white people come in the county here. Especially, I'd say, from Harris Neck, Shelman, Pine Harbor, even up on the roof 17 out there with the Burma cows. You know where that is out there? Well, that's all right when you go out to 17, you make a layer. He got a lot of Burma cows out there. Big pasture. Um, and that's the first I see Brum, I mean, buffalo. I'm talking about Brahma buffalo. Buffalo cows, all right. And no one with Mackinac County never had no buffalo cows. In Mackinac County, he get them there. He got them down there. I stopped by and look at them. You might want to stop by and take your picture of them. Yeah, I didn't know they had that, that here. Yeah. Um, you, you, had, you have some interest in uh, African-American cemeteries. Can you talk a little bit how you got interested in that and what, what you've learned about it? By me? About uh, black cemeteries. Can you talk a little bit about that, what you, why you're interested in it, and how you, what you've learned about them? and what, it, what Now, it? what you've been doing, people selling property. Like, okay, like when the hill out here. When the hill on 251. Let me break it better. Arctic Cemetery, right there on the curve. Okay. Now, when 95 come through, it was a white cemetery over there with 95, right back of Sam Smith Field. And right where Sam Smith Field and the white cemetery, where Smith had a fence on this side of the cemetery. And after 95 come through, the, they dig the bodies up and count the deer. Who is who and who is who and where is well, who would know nobody. You did for a living uh, during your working years. Military? After the military? Yeah. No, I didn't stay in military for two years. What I did for a living after military, I worked a concrete product in Brunswick. I started working there after the 4th of July, 1953. I worked there from July 53 
I don't know what money was, but till they went out of business. And they went out of business, I still was there helping them tear things up and getting rid of this and that. And the state got all that in Brunswick now. What about um, how the interstate changed this area? Well, what the, inter the interstate, inter do? interstate, what the interstate did, uh, cut out a lot of business with Mackinac County, and not only with Mackinac County, with Glen County too. But only thing with Glen County, when 95 comes through, they push out the own 95. All the mall and different other things when they are 95, all that's out there now for business, for the travelers. But Deering, Deering was off the map. We out here by the set, and 95 right there, so then 17. Nothing going through Deering but 17. Now the most of people with Deering going to Glen County shopping, going to Chatham County, Liberty County, and surrounding counties getting what they need. You know, I don't think it's no cheaper, which I got a uh, card for a discount behind to you, a buying thing. So when they built the interstate, people started to travel further out to buy stuff? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, not so much of the idea of that. And I must see is new people. I, I, I break in that to see with myself. I'm old people, I see. And the same road I was in with, shopping with this and this and this, and I still do that. But all this younger crew, like my daughter they, and others, they hit Savannah in a minute. They hit Hinesville in a minute. And I write here with Mackinac County, if not to Glen. Getting what I need. When you when you when you all grew the rice here, did you have to have some kind of wet fields or did you have to right water? a right wet bottom right? Could you with, talk about how that was done? With the water, well, the low place is whole water, and that helped the rice to grow. I'm mean, I'm most sure it did, and it's like say when it dry, we plow the rice field up. Sometimes if it get wet, we couldn't go back in the rice field to plow again. Only thing we had to do with the hoe until the rice get ripe. Chopping the weed and stuff out of it. Yeah. How did you bring the water in here for the rice? Oh, the rain water. No water we put on it. Now, Butler Island used to bring the water in for the rice. Butler Island, we had gates. They opened for the water with the rice with Butler Island. But I don't remember the rice with Butler Island. But I remember with the lettuce with Butler Island. And I, I don't remember when the dairy was on Butler Island. The dairy was on Butler Island, 1929. What's Butler Island? What are you, what are you referring to? Huh? What was it, the word you were referring to? What? Butler Island? Butler Island, I from there. What is that? Uh, it's a marsh and a waterfront. Oh, okay. And that really had rice. That where the rice plantation was with Butler Island. And Greenwood. And how do you spell that? Butlala, how do you spell that? Butler. B E N T. It's in that book there, too. Okay. We could look and find out after we get to talking to this. But anyway, see, Butlala was a rice plantation. Greenwood was a rice plantation. Now, when my daddy was a boy, he used to have to walk from in your ever where the house was, to Greenwood, the mine buried off the rice, to Greenwood. They ain't had no gun like we got gun and shell now. Then you start to make a, a ever what powder and whatever they put in the thing to shoot the old muscle or whatever. Old shotgun, the old gun looked like it long as a rope. But anyway, that way he had the mine buried to green with my daddy. And at 18, 1897. So, you're, some, so somebody, your dad would go to the plantation to chase the birds off? Uh-huh. Would did somebody pay him to do that or? 
Huh? Did someone pay him to do that? Yeah. Okay. Twenty-five cent a D. But he done that for my dad. Now we was mining the bird ourselves for nothing. We didn't make nothing mining birds. Yeah. Now you're planting in the field. That was us, us living. So that was something that, that was kind of you had to do all the time was scare the birds away? No, you didn't have the rice all the time. So you plant that rice like April, me. The rice ain't doing nothing now but growing. When he'd get up and put the rice on, that's when you had to wind the bird out of it. And you had to mine them all the time because he didn't have nothing to mine off of. See, when that rice didn't start putting rice on, that's when the bird, the bird had much sense of people. As long as they just putting on, there ain't nothing but a shaft, the bird didn't bother. The bird didn't bother until he come to a full material. Then the bird body, and then that's when we had to mine the bird out of it. What did a, did a scarecrow not work? Huh? You didn't try to use a scarecrow. A scarecrow didn't work. He didn't get light on the scarecrow. <laughs> he buried light on the scarecrow. Scarecrow didn't work. And then they ain't scared of you. We had to sometimes close to him. It's from here to maybe your van round before he'd go. Then we clap a hand and knock two bucket together, and run them. You know. Make a fuss. They go fly from over there and light over there. Then my other brother over there, they run them back and I run them back, back with them five. I'm surprised that you were able to grow rice here without any kind of flooding going on. Not much the rain for it. Huh. And ain't no flood, no water, and nothing. Which I don't water nothing. All my corn burned up last year. I mean, not water them, but I could have run a hose out there and save them. But I let the Lord water them. Uh, we didn't water nothing yet but setting out teeter like the D, slip wine. And if it didn't rain the deer tomorrow, we'd have water that one time and kid. What did you eat? Did you eat the rice just plain or did you cook it or did you, what did you eat with it? Well, we cook rice. Sometime my mother cook rice, chicken, neck bone. Neck bone was from hog we killed. We had a smokehouse full of meat. Ever what part of that meat she want to cut off to fry or put with some greens or some peas or some beans with the rice. See, now my aunt from Devro, Georgia, she used to come down there. And she didn't even know how to cook rice. They cook rice just like you cook grit. They didn't pour the water off. And her rice saw it just like grit. And when my mother fixed rice and showed how to do it, and then she learned how to do it. She living in Devereux, Georgia, between Milledgeville and Sparta. And how did your mom prepare the rice? Well, she just cooked a pot of dry rice. And this maybe okra, tomatoes, meat, whatever, that gravy would go on the rice for you eat. Or sometimes she stew chicken, and that stew chicken and gravy on the rice. You didn't just eat the rice like it is. Now, I do it plenty of time, and I say, I fry me two eggs and put on rice and a slice or two of bacon and put on rice. And I still eat that and do that. That's what I had this morning for breakfast. I had two scrambled eggs, some butter, a slice of ham, and my wife had fried some bacon, and I had a slice of hit the little line slice, and a plate of rice. And I eat rice seven days a week. You had see one while that rice wasn't good for you. And you see again, eat all the rice you can. So I don't know what good for me or what not, but it got me still going and ain't nobody hurting me. And they'd kick cataract off this right eye winds to come in. Are you still growing it here on the property? What? The rice? No, I ain't seen no rice since in the seventies. Mr. Blackman had get some rice seed from North Carolina from my daddy. And we had planted that. 
and it did bad and done good. But we didn't beat none of it. The old mother had done right. The pesto than the old mother, it's still out there. Why do you not grow rice anymore? Ain't none in this country no more. None around you. And if I grew it, no one would work with it no more. Because I wasn't there. See, so I beat the mother of rice. The mother, a big piece of wood like this, and that hole cut out in it. And it hold like a gallon of rice. And you beat that. And all that chaff come off the rice. Then you sift it and turn it out. The week we in rice of now, I wouldn't dare food with it. And not only the rice, I just plant some corn enough to have for the boil some corn to have corn. And my teeth, I don't plant enough of that to bank no more. We eat it just like it is. And like November, December, all my sweet potatoes are gone. We go up there to Glensville and sometimes get a bush or two bushes. How, how far back does your family go living here in, in, in McIntosh County? My daddy and my mother come here in McIntosh County in 1921. In 1919, my oldest brother born January 1921, my oldest brother. My mother come from Mount Osceola, Florida. My daddy was home, he born in Rio. Did your dad tell you any stories about um, some of his ancestors that might have been slaves before the Civil War or anything like that? Yeah, he told me a lot of that night. He didn't, he come along after the sleeve, but my daddy, Last car, see, switch en engine used to come all about through these woods. Yeah. My daddy cut the last car of his cordwood in 1909, the Hills Camp. Place over there used to call Hills Camp. Place over there used to call Old Savannah. Place over there called Becky Law Hill, Brady Hill, uh, Arthur Jones, Arthur Roy, old place. And all these old places where people used to live. And uh, now Arthur Ross, him and his son used to live in Bromsey. And they used to cut cross ties for a living. And as to his place over there, the company owned all that now, whatever. And he had a lot of land back there. Just like my dad had in here. Now my dad started off with 17 acres in here. I used to raise possum and coon too. That was around my possum shade. I got to finish cut these wine off of this. What was this building used for? This was for why I got in here my tractor. You, you, you could have get in the end there or on the other side where you could see better. Oh, that's right, I'm glad we come around this way. I want to show you the smokehouse. That's my old shade with the tractor. This the old smokehouse. Can you talk a little bit about that, how you what you did with that? Well, we used to smoke us meeting it. And uh hang it up in there and dry it out. And it was house still lasting. How long ago was it before? that you stopped? Oh, we packed the meat in salt, like eight or 10 days. And we take it out and wash the meat off with warm hot water and red pepper and hang it up. And like uh, two or three weeks, it be done dry out, fly, and nothing bothered. 
stay the year round. How old is that building there? Ooh. Ooh. See, I'm gonna just see. This the old building there that sawmill stuff booed on there and whatnot. I'm gonna just break it down 65 or 70 years, 70 some years old. This the building there. And them same sawmill booed on it. Same booed on it. Nothing different. A lot of junk I got in it, and I wish I had that. Well, I know. We could have taken it better. Did your uh, dad build that? Huh? Did your dad build that? No, I built it. When did you build it? I was a boy. I was a boy. Just a big boy, maybe 14, 15 years old or whatever. Boys now don't do what boys did then. Did most people around here smoke meat? The most of them did. Quite a few didn't. But most of them did. What did you use to smoke it with? Uh, green oak wood or rotten sap. Green oak wood or rotten sap. Did you find that kind of wood around here? Or yeah, or, or pine dye and rot. And then we'd wet that after it started burning, we'd smoke. Mm -hmm. Is the meat better that way than when you buy it in the store? Huh? Is the meat better than when you buy it in the store? Oh, Larkin. From the other 17. Them same old Bode. Now, a lot of people wouldn't believe this old Bode out there like that will last that long without being paint. But it did and it's still lasting. And we're looking at it. What kind of wood is that? Pine. Pine wood. Case hard. Light it hard. Why did you stop using the smokehouse? Because we ain't got nothing to put in it. <laughs> I quit with the hog back after me and my wife married. Last hog I killed and take up there to, um, to, uh, Salmon, somewhere up there. And they cured the meat and I had to come back. If I didn't keep the meat on ice, every bit of it would have ruined. So I quit with hog from then on. And my family didn't want no old hog. I raised, they wanted to get the hog out the stew. So that's what they end up doing and we're still doing that. Did you all do much uh, trading with, with uh, the people in Darien? Did you ever go into town very much? You say much trading? Yeah, did you go into town very much when you were a kid? No, we, we, we go there on Saturday. We go to town on Saturday. What kind of stuff did you do in town? Not much good. It looked like I didn't gather up the talk and be wrong. We didn't do nothing because, see, we had the most of us food, yeah. We raised us food, yeah. I had some boots stack up with them bush, but that's my old bush hog. I still using it. That over there, my cutter. And what do you do with those? I cut the field down with that. I spray dirt with that. And this is where you plant the rice out here, was out in these fields? No, we used to plant corn in here. I'm gonna let you take a picture of some corn. <laughs> See, yeah. We used to plant corn all in here. Was there a, ever an old old house here, like before that one was built? Huh? Was there, was there, uh huh? There be all the children born out over there. Didn't none born in this house. We're gonna come around with the old house spot and the old pump and everything over there. Okay. Uh huh. You know what it is? It's the broad axe. If we cut tie with it, huge tie with it. Cut what with it? 
cross tie. This way you hew it with. See, when you go hack it and you hew it with this. Now this, for a right hand man, broad axe. Now for left hand man, we're going to use this. How would you do it? Take the handle out there and put it in this side. See, it's so much, <laughs> it's so much what I do know. Now I can handle this. I can handle this. Where did it come from? Can you tell me about the history of that axe? Did you use it? This or? my daddy brought axe. He the one been using it. He cut cross tie with this or many one. And I bet you wouldn't find another one of these from your Atlanta. Where did he cut the cross ties? What, what area? All about around here. It was timber all about around here. Ain't nothing in the move. And uh, when he shoot a cross tie, I used to have to sneak him out that swamp out down there till I get to 17. It's a broad axe. Uh, many people have cut their foot off with this. See now, I, I right hand, I'll walk back with that low, just like that. And this thing sharp as a razor, you know. It real sharp. And would they just take a raw, like a raw log and just make a cross tie out of the raw log? No, no. Okay. You got a seven by nine, a seven by eight, six by eight, six by nine, and the eight foot long. See how that is? That highway is sharp. A sharp on that side. All right, you on this side cutting. On this side, you hewing that slick. And it hewing that cross tie, just like how he'd lay. You know what cross tie is going to railroad, but they cut them now with sawmill. So when was that used? Like how old do you think that thing? Nah, was? this broad. Ooh, my daddy been a hundred and eight, and I would believe this axe was older than him. I wouldn't have no kind of idea, no kind of idea, or no kind of number. Oh, this handling this axe here. I never knew he'd put no handling in his handling here where he was using. And see, I was snaking the cross tie. And I mean snaking the cross tie where he cut. I would school hack the tie for him. He's huey. He didn't trust me with the broad act that I'm going to cut my foot. And I'd have slip and use it when he wasn't around. And I learned to be a hero. Where did he keep it? Where did he hide it from you? He didn't hide it from me. I could always get it, but he the one that used this, and I used the club axe. I used the other hacks and school hack it. Okay, I plant that the last day of March, and it up and it beautiful. And I done put a little fertilizer to it, and when it get a little larger, I'm going to re-fertilize it again. And he'll come on to what he's going to do. What kind of stuff are you planting in there? Uh, the regular sweet corn. All right. And it, this tea, I got a row of tea over here, too. Now, is this stuff that you would have planted as a kid as well? Huh? Did you plant this stuff when you were a kid, too? Oh, come up doing it. And I still is. You want to come over here and show me your potatoes? Uh -huh. See, I got to have this flag frying up here for the deer. But the best thing I find for the deer, set in that window right there, I kill a many of them right there. Deer in that spot there. That's a rule I got. 
and I didn't have enough wine to get this one. Now is that regular potatoes or sweet potatoes? Regular sweet potato, right. What's that? Is that a scarecrow over there, the white thing? Yeah, that's a scarecrow. The deer ain't study that. They come right in here and I sit right there in that window. But if I sit in the front of that window, he ain't coming. I have to hide behind the edge of it and stick my rifle right in the tip and pop him when he get in there. Do you eat the deer meat? Yeet, baby. Can we go over here and see this building over here and talk about uh -huh. that building? That's the horse steeple. Oh, okay. Uh, look how they missed it to fall out the tree. This was a chicken coop. That's the chicken coop there. I take the tin from around there yesterday and I say I sell it for jump. That's the chicken coop. How old is that? Huh? How old is that? Uh, roughly guessing. My mother, I built that chicken coop there. Must be in the, somewhere in the fifties. The chicken coop. And at the horse diva there. Eh? How many horses did you have? One. Just one. Had two oxen. Oh that's right, this the this was the oxen, this the oxen you. You ever see one of them? Where would I put this for you to get a picture of this? On the ground? Yeah, you can put it outside here in the light. How do you do it? Lay it down? Or? You can just hold it if you can. Well, I hold can it. Can you talk about it? This uh, Bright Uke. The old man, the oxen, was named Bright. <laughs> and he, he, uh, Bought that ox from Miss Webster out to Townsend, a little bull cat. And he must be used that ox from 1921 to about 37. And he died. I don't know how old he was, but counting from then to that. And he's a great big white ox. And I was big enough for the two young ox my brother tried to break, and I finished break them. And had a double yoke for them, but the old man sell that yoke. So you use that on horses or ox? This was ox. And what would the ox be used for? To clear the, clear the field? Oh, we plowed the field with him. And against the Lord, we could cow an ass. So do you see. So that thing's from the 1920s, huh? Mm-hmm. This you kill. Ever what kind of wood this old man Shed Ross made this out of, I'd like to know. But now, he just bore through these two holes. He take an inch and a quarter pipe and burn them two holes through the wood. That's how he picked the shoe. I don't know how he made this one, but I see one he have made, and he had made them just like he made this one. And for this wood to last this long, I wouldn't know. Now, would the would the neck go through that collar there? What are these two rings the for? The two wood, these two rings, the wood shaft had went through this for the elk cart. The two shaft had stick through them. And these two things on here, the rope had gone through this. And what would the shaft and the rope, would they be pulling pulling the plow? You, you got it now, Annie. You got this. Mm -hmm. All right. The wood shaft had come through this. 
the rope was going to the barley and his mouth had gone to this. And them two shafts were through here. Yeah. And two trace chain in here. Two trace chain back to the single tree to the wagon. A wash house. Why did you wash the clothes way out here? We had a, we washed the clothes there, eh? and we had a she had a clothes line to hang it on. And then that was a corn crib. Had the corn crib. And now the hand pump we get water to wash for you. And where was the ho your house, the original house used to be? I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna let you get a picture of the step. I made the block step. I don't know how old I was when I did. I'm gonna let a boy tear that down one day, falling down. And the front of the house was that way and we had to walk and go to the road. And after the road come around here, yeah, that... There used to be a road out here? Not my wagon road. This the step. This the step was to the porch of the house at me. This the step. And where was the road in location of the house? The road. until this road paved and come around, put it in every day. And uh, So this was the back of the house right here? This was the back, till this road there come in. This was the front when the, the other side was the front when that road was there. There was nothing we had but a foot fast through the field and jumped the fence. What happened to the house? To the house every take down. See some new boot. All right, when we tear this down, this front, this step for the front now, you could get hit better than you did that.